By the end of this video, you're gonna know what an API is. You're gonna understand a sync and a wait so you can use that API. And we're gonna make a programming joke generator just so you have an extra project to add to your tool set to your GitHub and to your portfolio. Let's get into this. What is an API? An API is an application programming interface. Essentially, it controls the information being given out and it allows you to access it without having to worry about all the crazy stuff going on in the back end. Here's an easy example. Let's assume for a second that your car is an API. Now, you would get instructions on how to drive it, how to use it, things like you could accelerate and it would let you go, you could press the brakes and it's gonna let you stop. But it doesn't explain how the engine is doing all this stuff. It doesn't explain how the computer is doing all this stuff because we don't want you having access to that. We don't want you messing around and possibly breaking something. But also we wanna make your life easier by giving you this API that can give you all this information and save you a ton of work to do. And all you gotta do is just use this little gas pedal and go. Well, same concept here. We just wanna give you a link and it's gonna help you get all this information that you can get and use without having to program it all. Another example, let's assume for a second you're talking to your friend through an intercom system. The intercom system would be the API. It's getting your voice through, it's letting you talk through it, but it's not allowing the person to control you, to, to control what you're saying. It doesn't control anything about that. It just allows the information to go through. Hey man, what's going on? Oh man, not much. It's been a long time since we talked. Yeah, it has. Hey, while I got you, where's that $10 you owe me? <gasps> man, I know you're there, man. Say something, man. I know you're there. The intercom allows the communication to happen. So what's a sink and a wait? So according to MDN docs, an async function is a function declared with the async keyword and the wait keyword is permitted within them. So the async and await keyboards enable asynchronous promised based behavior to be written in a cleaner style. Async is a function that you declare by saying async function and then the name, and you're awaiting a response from the API that you're fetching. So let's explain this easily. So we're gonna have our async function here, then we're gonna call it a function, and then we're gonna just say name. Now we can call it whatever we want there, that's not really what matters right now, but here inside of this, we're gonna declare a const that we can call res, and in doing so, we're going to a wait and we're going to fetch and now what are we fetching we're going to fetch our api url so what we're saying here is we're making an async function we are awaiting a response that we're fetching and we're fetching it from our api url so we're sending the fetch call it's calling this api by its url and then it's bringing us back something. And then we could do something simple like, I don't know, console log it so we can see the response. And that's your function. So let's get into this. So as of right now, we just created this empty folder and we titled it joke. And so we're gonna go ahead and save our very first file as an index.html. And you can press the exclamation point and then tab and it gives us all of this boilerplate text for us. And we can come here to the title and rename this as the programming joke generator. Make that a capital G, perfect. We come to the body. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make this div. And this div is gonna be a class of container because we wanna contain everything that we're writing within it. And we wanna go ahead and do an H1. And the H1 is gonna be our title inside of the container and we're gonna call it programming jokes. Inside of that, we're gonna have our div ID for joke and the class will be joke and it's gonna be an empty div with nothing written there. That is where we're going to go ahead and use JavaScript to enter our joke inside of there and to change it. And then we're gonna use a button and that button we're gonna have an ID of joke button. The class will be BTN and we'll just go ahead and write make me laugh. And our goal with that is every time the button is pressed, we want to generate a brand new joke. And so we can come outside this body here and we'll do a script source and we're gonna name this app.js. We'll save that there. And we want to go ahead and link our style sheet and we'll name that style.c. So right now, if you don't have it already, go to the extension store and type in live server. 
and we want to go ahead and get this one right here with the purple icon but if you come back to your index.html page we'll right click and we can press open with live server and when we open it this is our current website so we currently have our h1 here and we have our button here this is where the joke area will go but as of right now we have no text there so we will enter that there so let's go ahead and now create a new file and we will save that and we will call this style.css and let's style this page. What we're doing now is we're gonna go ahead and do our basic settings for the page. And I wanna go ahead and make sure our box sizing is border box. After that, I wanna to come to our body over here. I wanna set this background color to this lighter blue. Now you can choose whatever you want. I'm, I kinda of like this lighter blue color. And our font family, we're gonna go ahead and use sans serif. I want to use Flexbox because this is going to allow us to center everything on the page. So we're using a display of flex, which basically says I'm declaring that I'm going to use Flexbox on our body. I want the flex direction to be column and I want to align the items as center. I want to justify the content as center as well. I want the height to be 100 view height, meaning I want it to take up the entire space of the page. I want the overflow to be hidden. So if there's anything extra, I don't want it being visible. I want my margin to be zero because I want it to start at the very top. I want our padding to be 20 pixels. Just give me a little bit of space. And that is everything for our body. So now we're on our container and we're using dot container because it's a class. If it was an ID, we would use hashtag container, but it is a class. So to call a class, we use the dot. And I want the background color of our container where the joke is going to be to just be white. I want the border radius to be 10 pixels, so nice round corners. I want to use a little shadow. I want it to separate and pop from the page. So I'm using a box shadow of zero at the top, 10 pixels and 20 pixels, and I'm giving my RGBA the opacity of 0.4. So it's a nice subtle thing as opposed to very prominent. I want the padding on this to be 50 pixels by 20 pixels. So the top and the bottom will be 50 pixels and the uh, left and right will be 20. I want to text align center. I want everything in the center. I want the max width of that container to be 100%, meaning the maximum it's gonna be is 100% of that page. I want the width to actually be 800 pixels. So this allows it when the screen gets smaller, we can go smaller with it. I want the max height to also be 100%, and I want the height to be 400 pixels. And that's our container. So we can go ahead and save that, and we can come back and check. And now you can see our page is that blue, our container here is white with that little bit of box shadowing, that little shadow effect with nothing at the top. And you can see here we have our H1, we have our area where our joke is gonna go, and we have our button here. So now we're on the H1, and I want the font size to be two rem. I wanna use the color right here, it's a little bit of a darker blue to contrast from the light blue. I want to go ahead and text transform uppercase, meaning I want all of the words to be uppercased. And so now I save that. We come back to our section here and we have our dark blue. We have it a little bit bigger than it was before and it all looks great and it's all upper. So now we're working on the joke. And if you remember the joke as a class, so we're using dot joke. I want to use a display of flex because I want to use Flexbox. I want to align the items as center. I want to justify the content as center. I want the font size to be one and a half rem, so I want it to be smaller than our heading, but I want it to be bigger than normal text. I want the margin to be 50 pixels, give us a little bit of space between the button and the header. I want the height to be 30%, so that gives me enough space to stay within the container. I want the width to be automatic because I don't know how long the jokes are gonna come out, so by having it as auto, it will expand and decrease depending on how much is written. And now we're on our button. So our button is .btn because it's a class. And we're going to use a background color, the same background color as the actual page. Then we're going to have a color of the text. I want to use a border of zero. I want the border radius to be 10 pixels. So I want nice, nice. We're going to do a border radius of 10 pixels because I want nice round corners. Same box shadow again. I'm adding a padding on side of that. I want a font size of just 16 pixels. I want the cursor to be a pointer. So when the button, when the, I want the cursor to be pointer. So when my mouse goes over that button, it notices that it's over a button. And so now we can come back and we can see that this button is now the same color as the background 
and when, you know when we press it we see nothing happening i want to add a little bit of an effect there so that way we know what's happening there like i want to add a little effect here so when it's pressed the user knows that it's been pressed but overall this is our joke container error we don't have a joke currently so we can't actually see anything there but we'll see that soon enough to add a little bit of action when we press that button this is super simple we'll just do a very easy effect here so we're going to go ahead and do button active so when it's pressed I want to transform the scale to be 0.95, meaning I want it to go 0.05% backwards. And when the button is focused, I want the outline to be zero because when you press a button, it will have an outline around it. We don't want that. So let's go ahead and save that in here. And just with those four lines of code, we're able to make this effect of when it's pressed, it goes backwards. Now let's do this job. So we're gonna make a new file here or we're gonna save this and we're gonna call this our app.js. So the very first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to declare our variable of a const called joke text. That joke text is going to be a document dot get element by ID joke. And if we come back here, you can see our joke section here is the ID of joke. So we're getting our ID and we're going to place something in here. The second variable that we're going to have is our joke button and we're using get element by ID, the joke BTN. And you can see here it's joke BTN. So we want to get that variable so we can control that button. And so we're going to go ahead and do joke BTN. We're going to add an event listener on that. And that event listener is going to be when it's clicked. So when it's clicked, I want to go ahead and generate jokes. So how are we going to generate jokes? Well, we're going to go ahead and make a function call generate jokes. So using our async and await that we learned before, we're going to use a sync function. And then the name of the function, which we obviously know now is going to be generate jokes. And inside of here, we're going to go ahead and do a const. And that const is going to be res, which stands for response. And we're going to use our await. And our await is going to now fetch a URL. So I found this really cool API called jokeapi.dev. It is completely free and we don't need any API keys. So it's very easy to use for your very first time. And what we're going to do here is we're going to select our categories and we're going to go ahead and do programming. So since we want programming jokes and we want to set some flags, we don't want anything not safe for work, religious, political, racist, etc. We want to keep this nice family friendly. So this is the URL that it's given us to use for this. And you can see that it's added the areas that we don't want our flag. So not safe for work, religious, et cetera, but we can send the request here and you can see how it comes out. We have an error, we have a category and it has the setup and then it has the delivery. And that is basically how we're going to be getting our jokes. So we can go ahead and copy this URL above and we are going to be using this in our JavaScript. And what that URL is going to be is the URL we just copied. And then what we can do now is we'll make a new const. We'll call it data and it will equal await res the response or awaiting the response. And we want it in a JSON format since that's how it's going to come, right? And so now we can go ahead and do console.log data and we can see how it's working. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's come back here. Let's go to inspect, you right click inspect, and we get our console and we see that we have an object and this is how it's coming. So we have the category, we have our flags there and we have our joke. So let's go ahead and press this again, just to see how it comes, do it a couple times. And let's see, make sure each time it comes out the same way. And so now we have our setup and the difference here is you can see we have our joke here but I'm seeing something now. We have a delivery on this one. So this is interesting. So what we're gonna have to do, since it's coming in two different ways, we have sometimes it says joke, and sometimes it says setup and delivery. So we're going to have to factor that into our code here. All right, so we're gonna have to, hmm. Okay, so sometimes it says setup and delivery, sometimes it says joke. So we will have to make an if statement so that way we can be prepared for this situation. 
But as you can see, this is how it's coming. This is how a JSON from an API shows. We have our category, we have our error, we have our flags that we said we want off, and we have all this information there, and we'll be able to now manipulate and use that for our benefit. So we can leave that console.log there for a second, and just to test that we know what we're talking about, let's do console.log data dot joke and let's go ahead and do console dot log data dot delivery just so we can see the two of them and so we can come back here and this one right here it shows undefined for the joke portion but you can see here the delivery is right there so data dot delivery delivered this so now we know once we press this again now this time data dot delivery is empty but as we can see here, data.joke produces our joke. What we're going to do now is we're going to declare our variable of joke as a let, and it's an empty string. And we're making our if statement that if data.joke is undefined, meaning if the joke portion is not there, we're going to go ahead and do joke equals backtick. And we're using a template literal, which means take the exact value that we're calling and insert that and we want the exact value of data dot setup to be put in there so it's inside this template literal then we have a line break and then we have our data dot delivery else if joke data dot joke has something in there we want our variable of joke to equal data dot joke and then we're going to use joke text dot enter html to send that joke let's go ahead and save that we bring this back here, we come back here, and let's see what we have this time. So we don't have a joke, but we have our setup and our delivery. And when we look here, why do programmers prefer to use dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. <laughs> Silly little joke, but you can see our setup is there. We have our line break, right? So let's go ahead and minimize this slightly. So you can see right here, we have our setup. We have our line breaks since they're not next to each other and we have our delivery. Let's go ahead and press this again. And this time we have the exact same thing. It looks like we have our setup and we have our delivery and then let's go ahead. That's another one. And so we can come here and it says joke. How do you tell HTML from HTML5? It's just one line. So setup and delivery are empty. They're not there and we have our joke there. And just like that, you just used an API, you just used a sync and await with JavaScript to go ahead and show that API, and we created an if statement using template literals to display all of that information. Give yourself a pat on the back. You absolutely rock this. I hope you really enjoyed this and understand the basics of using an API. Now, I can talk about this all day long, but I want you to check out my other videos. So check out my other videos, and I will see you on the next one.